Okay, here I want to talk about high intensity discharge grow light bulbs. And here's an example of one right here. I'll hopefully understand them just a little bit more uh, after this lecture. So HED bulbs, insulation and removal. Well, never directly touch the bulb as the oils of your hands could weaken the glass and increase the odds of breaking. Here using uh, plastic uh, gloves in addition to paper towel. Also here, putting them on paper towel right from the start um, to ensure you're not going to go and touch them. Also want to not, if you're looking at removing a bulb, make sure that it is not warm. You want to make sure it's fully cooled before you're even going through and touching it with anything uh, before you're removing it from the fixture. If a bulb breaks, hopefully you're not in the area when it does. Uh, you want to make sure you turn off electricity as soon as you realize it and give it sufficient time to cool off. Then to remove it, because there'll be shards of glass, you want to take a potato cut it in half, take the flat side and jam it against the broken shards of glass. And then while still holding on to the potato, you want to then turn to loosen the bulb that way. It's a very safe way to remove a bulb that has broken, uh, which is not a good condition to be in, uh, but it is a safe way to help remove that bulb with minimal chance of damage to yourself. When you replace the bulbs, well, lumen output will degrade over time, resulting in less heat and poorer growing uh, spectrum. You want to document the day, the month, and the year of purchase if your grow shop does not do this when you purchase it. Bulb replacement is often debated, but check with the stated life of the bulb you're using. And then by having that documentation of that day, that month, and that year, it allows you to make a judgment of how long, many hours you'll be running it a day and what the expected life would be of that bulb. You want to make sure you have some bulbs on hand, and that can means you need to match up with whatever um, type of fixture you're using. Keep some spares on hand. Replacing bulbs after six to eight months is not unheard of, again, depending what type of light you're running. Do not look at the bulb while it's on. Uh, turn it off a lot to cool, and then inspect the arc tube for a cloudy or dark discoloration if you're not sure how old the bulb is. This will indicate that you need to change the bulb when they get that kind of arcing or that blackness there. Some growers will even keep extra fixtures on hand to, in case a ballast goes out, uh, but make sure you're having definitely plenty of extra bulbs, especially if you're running many of the same um, light structure. There's a debate between single and double-ended bulbs. This is a single-ended, this is a double-ended. Single-endeds produce less heat. Uh, they're a better fit for smaller areas with low ceiling height, and they're typically used in grow tent operations. Double-ended, as this here, as we see the DE, this is single-ended and double-ended. These are typically used for large-scale production as they produce more heat, but you're getting more light for the same energy, and as a result, these are typically used in larger areas or grow rooms. Uh, than the single-ended ones are. Again, both are very effective, uh, but looking at just maximizing that efficiency that much more in a large area that you can cool, the double-ended is the way to go.